This is my 4G63 Turbo out of my 1997 Mitsubishi Eclipse GST. This is pretty much how the engine was sitting for about three to four years before I finally took it all apart. I showed you in the last video how bad the damage was to the rod bearings and hopefully in this video I'm going to see if there's any more damage to the main bearings or any thrust bearing issues. The cylinder head I'm really hoping that all I have to do is clean it. I don't want to have to send it out, so I'm going to check to see how bad the cylinder head is. I'm probably just going to sand it down and put it back on. This bolt, I'm going to have to easy out, get the bolt out. I don't believe I had a thermostat in there, and if I did, it was probably just a, a 180. This turbo overboosted a lot, so I'm probably not going to be putting it back on. This O2 housing, I won't need again, because I'll be putting on a tile wastegate. This Gretti timing belt should be pretty good still. This motor mount was supposed to have three bolts in it. Now I already showed you the bottom end, the bearings that I was able to remove without removing the cylinder head. And I was only able to get to just the two rod bearings. And they don't look horrible. They looked like they were really heavily worn from a lack of oil. I'm going to have to pull the cylinder head off to get to the main bearings. This engine's pretty dirty, so before I start disassembling it, I'm going to take it outside and clean it. As I put things back together, I'm going to try to clean them up. I have to remove all of these parts so that I can get the block out to machining to see if I have to have the cylinder walls cut or if I can get away with them just being cleaned. Now it's time to tear this engine apart. First, I'm going to remove the spark plug wires. Next, I'm going to remove the intake manifold, which is so much easier not in the car. These bottom bolts are a pain to get to. Most of the bolts are 12 millimeter or 14 millimeter. See how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. And the intake is removed. Next, I'll remove the air conditioning compressor. I won't be putting this back on. Take off the front engine mount. This water pump pulley is a real pain to remove because the water pump wants to keep turning. I tried everything I could to get it off. It's a lot easier just to use an impact gun. Next, I'll remove the harmonic balancer. Removing the timing cover is easy. You just need to remove all the 10 millimeter bolts. Next, I'll remove the crankshaft position sensor, which I wasn't using because I was only using the camshaft position sensor. Where it go? Then I'll use a 14 millimeter to remove the timing idler and tensioner pulley. An impact gun won it loose in the nut on the crankshaft pulley. Oops, forgot to put in the bolt on the engine stand. Next, I'll remove the turbo exhaust manifold. You can use a flathead or a 7mm to loosen these hose clamps. Both of these end bolts were different sizes on mine. Now I'll cut the engine oil cooler lines. Now I'll remove the thermostat housing bolts. This bolt is the only bolt that holds on the coolant pipe to the water pump. Now I'll remove the valve cover. All of these bolts were really loose.
So next I'll remove the camshaft bearing caps. Keep track of where these rocker arms came from because they wear on the camshaft and you want that to be the same. I have to remove these head nuts in a certain order. Now with the cylinder head removed, I can remove all of the washers. Now I'm removing the oil filter housing. Next I'm removing the timing belt tensioner. Next I'm removing the timing belt tensioner arm. Next I'm removing the water pump bolts. This is the front motor mount bracket. This bracket held on the power steering pump. Next I'm removing the bolts I left loose on the oil pan. I still have to break this loose so I'm going to use a crowbar to hold the crankshaft still. I'm removing the balance shaft and oil pump sprocket. Now I have to remove all of the bolt for the timing cover, which is also the oil pump. Now I'm removing the pistons and piston rods. This engine didn't want to turn over very easy. Now that I have turned the engine, I can get to these two piston rod bearings. As I knock these down, I'm trying not to hit the crankshaft or the cylinder wall. Next, I'll remove the crankshaft main bearing girdle. I can already see how bad the crankshaft is from the rod bearings. With the girdle out, I can now tell that all of the main bearings are really worn and there was clearly a lack of oil. The thrust bearing looks a little worn and it's pretty black and bronze. The crankshaft bearing journal look pretty worn and they're probably gonna have to be cut 10,000. Next, I'll have to see how long and how much it's gonna take at the machine shop. 